Hey guys, Jarrett here, aka Misohani, back again with another uh, Murder at Castle Nathria video here. And this time, we talked about the top 10 wild cards. We're going to talk about the top 10 standard cards. And here, we're going to start out with a little bit more uh, honorable mentions again. Uh, this time, three honorable mentions rather than just one honorable mention. Obviously, the format's a little bit more narrow. Some more cards from the set are going to affect it. Uh, the, the way the meta shapes out here. Uh, we're going to start here with Theotar, the Mad Duke. And the reason why I put it in the honorable mentions is I don't think it's going to be a, a card down the line that's going to see a whole lot of play. But here in the beginning, when people are trying stuff out, it is going to be a key disruption piece that we haven't really had in Hearthstone before. Um, this card seems like it's, it's just really good at either high rolling your opponent um, and getting efficient trades in a, in a different way. You're literally trading cards. Uh, you can give them like a, a you know, a Sensus Chef for their hero card, like a Brucon or something like that. And it is going to be really good. However, as the format goes down the line here, this might uh, kind of weed combo decks out of the format just because it exists and you don't really have to play it. Uh, we've seen it in past metas that this happens and I, I think it will happen again, uh, but I, that doesn't make this card a, a bad card per se. I think it is a good card and that's, that's kind of why it's here. So that's one of the honorable mentions and Another one is going to be the Mage card, Frozen Touch. Uh, in both the re reveal stream that Brian Kibler did and the theory cracking streams, this card looked really good. Uh, looked better than what it does on paper, I would say. Uh, it's just super efficient. Like, we've had two mana deal three before, but it's three damage to anything. And if you're playing the Volatile Skeleton deck, you're going to be trading off minions left and right. And you're going to be getting additional copies of this uh, for either additional face damage or just contain the board a little bit more. So that's kind of why it's here on the list. And then the last one, which almost cracked the top 10, was Dispose of Evidence. And this isn't going to make it just because I felt like taking a little bit more of a, uh, a gamble on my top 10, especially for the number 10 spot. And, but I can't not talk about this card because zero cost spells generally in the past are really good and they do see play. And I think this one's the same exact way. It's going to see play. It's super efficient and allows you to do things that you don't really think off the top of your head that you can do. I mentioned in the review video about, um, Putting Caria back in, or not Caria, putting Xylai back in your deck to keep your Caria active. Uh, shuffling a Jace early on in the game back in your deck. If you have a Crixis in your hand and you don't want to discard the Jace, you want to draw it later on in the game. Uh, Demon Hunter has plenty of cycle, so they should be able to cycle through their deck pretty quick. And this card's just solid. Solid, solid card. So let's move on to the actual top 10 then for. Murder at Castle Nathria here. At number 10, I said I was taking a bit of a risk, and I'm sticking to my guns on this one. I think Mass Reveler is a, a really good card. It fits in the so many decks that you just don't really think about. Uh, Beast Hunter. You can get a copy of Mother Bear. You can even get a copy of King Crush. Getting the quick two damage in there, have King Crush die, and then all of a sudden your revive pets are online. Uh, this is just... Solid. It's like an additional copy of uh, Ashar and Saber, but you don't even have to have the, sinkin', the sunken copy of it in your deck. Uh, that's really good. And maybe this opens up slots in your deck to where you don't have to play cards like Pet Collector, even though it's a really solid card. Maybe you want something else in those decks. Uh, Death Rattle Druid could play this card. Death Rattle Rogue could play this card. It can get you a Naval Mine. Um... The only miss really in Death Rattle Rogue is the uh, the two mana two two with stealth and it like changes into the a Death Rattle minion that you play. Um, that's really the only miss there, and that's not necessarily 
bad even. Because um, then you just get a, a Forsaken Lieutenant on the board for your future plays. So this card seems like it's really good, and that's why it's in the number 10 slot. And I, I think it's going to see a lot of play. At number 9 is going to be Wild Spirits. I was bouncing between this and Aralon. But Aralon just seems too slow, and even in the theory crafting streams, like generally, like if people played Aralon, this was the card afterwards that was really making the deck come together. Um, this card just seems like super efficient. Uh, if you wheel, it doesn't really matter what you roll off of it. If you roll, uh, as long as you roll a stag and and one of the other ones, it, it it's good value. It's just so good. At what it does for three mana, and especially if you're you're on the coin here, or if you have two of these, uh, haven't helped your opponent. So that's why this is in the number nine slot. I think this is going to be a, a really solid color for Hunter. Uh, next we have Baroness Vosh. Uh, obviously, Evolve Shaman looks like it's going to be pretty strong, and this is such a cool design for Evolve. Uh, from what we've gotten in the past, that it's it's this got to be in the number 10, uh, top 10 slot here at number 8. And the stats are okay on this. 4 mana, 3, 6 is, is fine. Uh, nothing to scuff at. It might stick around on the board for a turn or two, hopefully, and allow you to get your evolve value from your uh, from your disguises, from your mug pools, and from your uh, primordial waves of the format right now. Uh, I think this card's really good. It's going to see a lot of play moving forward. I mean, just, there's no denying it. So that's why it's in the number eight spot here. Uh, at number seven, we have the Widow Bloom Seedsman. And there's not really much to talk about this one. This has a lot of comparisons to Meyer Keeper. Uh, except for one less toughness, you get to draw a nature spell, which is a big deal in standard right now. So, uh, Druid is it was looking like it's going to be a pretty strong contender for the top tier of standard here just on paper and speculation terms. So uh, we'll see moving forward. But this does everything that a Druid you would want a Druid card to do. It draws a card, it lets you ramp. So and it's also just a three two body. So overall, just a solid good card. Nothing exciting, but. It doesn't need to be exciting for, for what it does. <coughs> Excuse me. At number five, we have Nightcloak Sanctum. Uh, this card was good in the reveal stream when it had two durability, and I think it's going to be really strong at three durability. It's going to be the reason why these Volatella Skeleton deck works. It stalls the game out. It allows you to game board. It just does everything, and he you're getting three bodies on top of it now instead of just two bodies from the reveal stream. That's so good. Uh, it just does a, such a good job. Like, we've seen Snowfall Guardian do such a good job. This is, like, mini Snowfall Guardian, sort of. Uh, that's kind of, like, a good way to think about it. It's just, like, mini, like mini uh, fixed two, two bodies um, containing the board. I think that's the best way to describe it, actually, is it's just <laughs> not busted Snowfall Guardian, and that in and of itself is a, a really good card. So that's why that's the number six card here, and at number five, we have Kael'thas Sinstrider. Uh, not as good as his uh, counterpart card here, but uh, moving to the Shadowlands, apparently he's focused on more minions now, so... This is going to allow you, obviously, the obvious combos here are, oh, play this, play Bran, play Denathrius on 9 mana, or play this, play Bran, play Kalthusad, or Mordresh. Um, obviously, those combos, yeah, they're, they're extremely good. Um, I'm sure there's other combos out there that we're not really thinking about. Uh, maybe you just want a cheap Netchelon. That's fine. <laughs> Like, this is a 6-mana 4-7 body, and it's just going to cheat so much mana that it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, it just does not matter what it does. 
if you're playing this on six and then you're playing like a Murloc Tiny Fin and you just get a big minion out, that's fine. That's fine because it's mana cheating and mana cheating in the past has been so powerful that it it just is it's just a good card. It just doesn't almost doesn't matter what you're doing with that mana as long as you're cheating mana and affecting the board in some way, it's gonna be good. So that's why it's the number five card here. At number four, uh, it was kind of rough thinking about this one because I know Sinstone Graveyard gets a lot of hype, Draka gets a lot of hype. Uh, I talked about Door of Shadows in the Wild video, but Private Eye is just so good. It's not going to be like the the Bell Ringer from, from Witchwood. The Bell Ringer had the Battle Cry and the Death Rattle where it cheated two Paladin spells or secrets out. Uh, one Paladin secrets are one mana. Two, this is on Battle Cry, and you're getting value from it, even if you don't combo it. Uh, but if you do combo it, it's cheating four mana worth of secrets, and you're on the field. And that's pretty good. It, it, you're either going to get more bodies, you're going to draw cards, or you're going to get uh, two gain tempo from uh, the uh, kidnapping. Uh, so this card just seems like an all-around solid player and most rogue decks probably moving forward, especially Secret Rogue. Um, do I think it's going to see the most play? No, I don't. Is it the most exciting card? Also no, but it is just all around a solid card, and that's why it's the number four card here. The best way to think about this card actually is Mini Mysterious Challenger. Uh, it's just good. At number three here, we have Topiar. Topiar. The Shrubagazer, and this card is so good for Druid. Uh, this allows Druid to deal with wide boards, because every nature spell that you play after this one is just going to be a 3-3 Whelp with Rush. Uh, so you're kind of getting like uh, mini scales of Anixia on each of your nature spells, in addition to what they do. And that's just really good, and getting the 7 mana for Druid right now is not hard at all they're going to get there by turns four or turn five so playing this on five is going to be a, a pretty common thing i i have to believe and then you're just going to be able to start fighting for the board which druid doesn't usually do well especially with wide boards so this card strengthens a weakness that druid have which is why it's number three on the list and it's just a super powerful card at number two, uh, the card that we've talked about a lot here is Impending Catastrophe. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's talking about it after the theory crafting streams. Everybody was talking about it before, uh, whenever it initially got spoiled. That it, oh man, this just looks like super good, and it it turns out it is. It, like I, I'm not joking. Whenever I said during the theory crafting streams with decks that aren't really refined or anything like that. Uh, it's drawing you four to seven cards, but let's say it's not drawing you four to seven cards. Let's say it's drawing you a little bit less than that at two to five cards for two mana. That's still really good in Warlock that's already sifting through their deck with their hero power. So this card is going to be an all around, all around formats, all star, um, maybe not arena just because you don't draft a lot of spells, but you also don't have to draft spells to make this good. You can just draft imps to make this good in arena, and I expect it might be okay there even too. So that's why it's number two here on the list, and expect to be seeing a lot of this card played. And finally, at number one is going to be Primordial Wave. Uh, whenever I did the review for this, I wasn't super high on it. I was actually more high on Muck Pools, and then after seeing it played, I think. I think I just forgot how good Devolve really is as a spell. Uh, the fact that you're getting the board swing on both sides is just really good. It was really good during the theory craft. It's going to be really good moving forward. And even if you're just casting this as a like, three mana Devolve, depending on the matchup, that's that's pretty good. I mean, this card was obliterating Warlock decks. Uh the M block decks and it was just giving them a bad time. Even if you're, like I said, even if you're casting this as a three mana devolve, three mana devolve is pretty good. Um, 
and in wild you have primordial uh dungeoneer in that format so yeah that, this card is just all around going to be pretty good uh, moving forward here so expect to see a lot of this a lot of this card and expect to see probably hopefully most of these cards hopefully i'm right on these uh maybe we'll look back on this in another few months and we'll talk about how wrong i was so anyways guys that's the top 10 for standard and the next video that we're going to be doing is going to be the theory crafting day one videos uh where i'm going to pitch out decks here that look like they might be solid day one decks hopefully and uh, i'm sure it'll be it'll be a fun one it's always fun the uh, uh, finally it's like the most exciting time in uh to play hearthstone is whenever a new expansion is coming out i would say the only other fun time really is when rotation happens because you know that there's guaranteed change when that happens but uh, anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, please, please, please like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, don't be scared to comment down below. Maybe tell me what your top 10 list is uh, from this set. Uh, follow me on Twitter at MisoHoney. And anyways, I'll hope to see you guys in the next video here. But until then, have a good one and peace.